Hi, I'm Tyler, and welcome to another episode of my Christian Music Week reviews. Each week I take five releases, be it LCPs or singles, and after I listen to them all week, I come back here and I review them, I share what I think about them. So without further ado, let's get to this week's first release, Mercy Moon's new album, Always Only Jesus. Mercy Me's new album, Always Only Jesus. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. Stylistically, definitely on the contemporary pop rock and contemporary pop side of things. A few worship songs on this album, too. Mostly a pretty upbeat album, but some slower moments, too. But whether they're upbeat or slower, all the songs on this album are pretty good. As always, from Mercy Me. And as for the lyrics here, pretty good lyrics here, too. Mercy Moon talks about how even when pain leaves us weak, we can still worship and put our hope in Jesus for how he pursued us in his undeserved grave-conquering grace through his blood to wash us free and pure from sin and shame to work for our good. By giving us strength to work for his good purpose through the pain till he takes us home to heaven. Up next, Matt Marr's new album, The Stories I Tell Myself. Matt Marr's new album, The Stories I Tell Myself. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. And heads up about the track list here there are a lot of tracks on this album. 20 tracks total on this album. So, quite a few songs here. Stylistically, contemporary and worship, first and foremost. Or I should say worship and contemporary. Let's put it in that order. Worship and contemporary, first and foremost. But also incorporates elements of Southern rock. Alternative, gospel, pop rock. And some folk elements towards the end of the album here. And as for the lyrics here, love the lyrics here. Matt talks about how in times of suffering, he joyfully surrenders his life to the arms of God, who in his unconditional love through Jesus's defeating death on the cross, welcomed Matt when he was broken and running away to be satisfied with belonging and a brand new life that Matt lives to encourage the church to turn away from division over differing views and seek to understand each other as, as we are united on the common ground of the cross of Jesus Christ's love. I really like that point in particular, how he focuses on unifying how the church needs to be united instead of being divided over our differing viewpoints. Instead of focusing and fighting over our different viewpoints, we need to be focused on the cross of Jesus' love for us. Up next, The Riper's new album, The Final Battle. Striper's new album, The Final Battle. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. And I'm going to kind of divide this album into two stylistic and lyrical categories here. So, the first category, so, into two parts here. So... Ten of the songs on this album definitely fall under the heavy hard rock and metal feel here. And as for the lyrics to these ten songs, love the lyrics here. Love how queerly Striper gives the gospel, plus the urgency to reach people with the gospel. And as for the lyrics here, Striper talks about how we were born in God's image, knowing what's right but chose to follow our sin-hardened hearts. But those of us who now have resisted that to put our hope in how Jesus and his mercy died to save us from that and how one day he's coming back to rapture us into heaven 
Until then, you need to unite as the church to rely on his strength to tell those still lost to do the same before he comes back for us in the rapture and they're left behind in the tribulation and then to face eternal death. There are also two power ballads on the sound that kind of follow the hard rock and metal feel and are kind of heavy, though to be clear, not as heavy as the other 10 songs on the album. And as for the lyrics here, kind of more on the love song side of things, as their lead singer Michael Sweet talks about how he needs to be committed to trusting with his love, his wife who is near him with strengths. And now a few more points about the album as a whole before I move on here. So, vocally, Michael Sweet sings for the most part. Not really outright screams, but kind of more like shrieks. Singing shrieks that turn into screams, I would say is the best description. And also, I gotta give it to their guitarist, Oz Fox. He does... An awesome guitar solo on every single song on this album. Both heavy and ballads alike. At some point, Oz Fox does a guitar solo on each song. And on every song, it sounds pretty good. Though some songs better than others. More stand out than others, to be clear. Up next, Josh Baldwin of Bethel Music's new album, Where the Glory Is. Josh Baldwin of Bethel Music's new solo album, Where the Glory Is. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. Stylistically, definitely a country feel overall. With some pop rock elements combined with the southern sound. And as for the lyrics here, pretty good lyrics here as well. Josh talks about how God, in his love through Jesus' blood has resurrected Josh free from a past of being dead in sin and shame to live a new life where the Holy Spirit puts a fire in Josh to follow his leading, to follow a path of sharing this hope that is hard and uncertain, but also a path that God is with him on to give him strength. Up next, our last release for today, Jonathan Ogden's new album. Jonathan Ogden's new album, Future Forever. Let's dive into it. So, pretty good album here. Stylistically, so alternative worship mainly. But definitely got some diverse influences here stylistically as he has elements of pop, folk, Lo-fi, EDM, and ambient influences, all in addition to the alternative and worship elements already mentioned. And as for the lyrics here, pretty good lyrics here. Like how Jonathan focuses heavenward here on this album. And as for the lyrics here, Jonathan talks about how he feels low in this painful world and needs to see the glory of the Lord's incomparable love. To change him, to surrender himself, to shine the light of that love in this world until his desire to make it home to heaven, where all will be restored new, and where he will praise the Lord for his reign and salvation forever. Well, that's it for this week. Come back next week for five more releases. If you like what's on the video, please subscribe. Put up videos every Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Also, if you have any thoughts on today's releases or what I may have said about them, let me know in the comments below. Also, in the comments, you can let me know if there's any awesome releases that came out today that you want to see in next week's video. Also, check out the playlist section for our Meet the Month Dream playlist for the October edition of my Meet the Month Dream playlist while it's still up for a few more days. Available here on YouTube and also on Spotify. And this month's edition of the playlist includes songs from artists like Brandon Heath. Kay Thompson, Building 429, and others. So come and check that out if you're interested. And know that on Tuesday, the November edition of The Playlist will be coming out. And as we head into November, I feel like it's time to talk about the next couple months for this channel here. So I got three more regular shows this year featuring five awesome Christian releases. 
And then it's on to five weeks of Christmas shows, starting with Black Friday and concluding two days before Christmas here. One Christmas video per week, featuring five awesome Christian Christmas releases to come out this year. And the cool thing is, while I'm on the subject of this, is that you can start requesting your favorite Christian Christmas releases now. So if you're the type of person that likes to turn on your Christmas music before Thanksgiving and you're like, hmm, I bet Tyler needs to review this awesome Christian Christmas album, EP or single this year. You can now leave a comment to me to let me know that you want to see it in a video this year and I will try to get that in. And then... Right after Christmas, on December 30th, as I always do right after Christmas. So, during the Christmas season, there are a few Christian albums that are not holiday-themed that come out during the Christmas season while I'm reviewing Christmas music that come from notable artists, but don't get reviewed right away because, well, I'm doing Christmas music. So, this year again, I will be doing a show featuring five of those releases. And during the Christmas season, you're going to be able to give me requests as to who should be featured in that video. And then, on January 6th, Epiphany. I will go back to doing normal videos again as I talk about the five best Christian releases from December 30th. So, there you go. That's the rest of the year. In a nutshell, so look forward to hearing your Christmas requests and look forward to doing a few more awesome regular shows this year. Feel like I, we got some good stuff coming before Christmas hits still, too. So I'll go now. See you next week. And get ready for Christmas videos in just a few weeks. Bye!